things my ex did and I stayed. Of course, everybody's been in a relationship where they probably should have exited stage left way sooner than they did. But I'm going to be vulnerable and honest about some of the things I know I should have left soon as it happened. Right. Soon as it happened. OK, I'm single, live alone. Um, I have a housekeeper who come once or twice a week and cook pretty good, meal prep my food. I do got a girl who do meal prep, right? I was dating a girl who had some financial issues. She didn't have enough money to buy food for her and her kids. So I took her to the grocery store. She got groceries for her kids, like three, four hundred dollars worth of groceries, right? I come home from a long day of just being out, running around, all of that. Now, we live separate and everything. And so... I was on the phone with her talking as I was pulling up in the driveway and she was I was just like, what you into? And she was like, oh, I just finished cooking uh, me and the kids getting everything square or whatever. And I'm like, well, I just pulled up to the crib. I guess I'm going to go in here and try to find something to eat real quick. And so I uh, go in the house, you know what I'm saying? And I'm I'm listening to her, you know, and I'm waiting for her to say what y'all thinking. I'm waiting for her to say it. Right. So I'm waiting for her to say, like, well, you know, I cooked. With the groceries you bought, you should come and get a plate or I'm going to bring you a plate. Yeah, fam, that didn't happen. That didn't happen at all. And that went on every day that week. She didn't offer any other food. Like she didn't say, let me cook you a meal for it. Hey, buy my family groceries. Nothing. I should have stopped talking to her then. But y'all know Tommy goes way too far. Mm. Mm. And these might be petty things, but I'm just telling y'all my truth. All right. So don't don't beat me up. You know what I'm saying? Leave it in the comments. If I'm if y'all don't agree with me, please leave it in the comments. We'll talk about it later, family. So the next thing was like I had never been over her crib like and spent the night or anything like that. But she had been over my crib. And I mean, I have a bachelor pad like, you know, my color palette is very masculine. Y'all see the stuff on the walls, you know, hats. You know, I got a room full of tennis shoes, you know, all that kind of stuff. Like this is a bachelor pad. I'm the only person to live here. You know, it is what it is. At the same time, I think my things are nice. Right. She came over and she just dogged everything in my crib. Like, you know, oh, them hats on the wall is stupid. I don't know why anybody would do that or, oh, you need to paint in here. It's dark. It's gloomy. You need to do this. You need, you know, flowers. You need this. I just basically berating every room in the house. I mean, the kitchen. She like, you got all white appliances. Ugh. Who has all white appliances? So I'm like, in my head, I'm like, oh, let's see your crib. You know what I'm saying? So eventually, I think like a couple of weeks later, she invited me over her crib. Fam. Like, when I go into the crib, like, she got a sectional, but it's made out of three different sections. Like, it's, like, three different sectionals. Like, she she literally made a sectional. She did, a like, a junkyard transformer sectional. And I'm, like, like, one part brown, one part a recliner, one part a ottoman that she then turned into a chase. And I'm... And she didn't talk to all this stuff about my house, like everything in my house. And she she over here with like some Rat Pack stuff. <sighs> I digress. So, you know, she like, come on in, sit down, you know what I'm saying? And I sit down and I'm like, <laughs> it's just weird. I'm weirded out at this point. Right. And so, you know, her her kids that came home. So she was like, hey, just come in the room or whatnot. So she, you know, I went back in her bedroom now. I have a king size bed. I have a beauty rest mattress. I actually have one of those reclining beds. I have back issues. So, you know, it vibrate, all that kind of stuff. But her bed, her bed, her bed was on the floor, family. Her bed was on the floor. And I'm not talking like, you know, one of those bamboo Hawaiian situations where it got like a little wood plank up under it. And, you know, what I'm saying it's nice. And you got like a little half step and it's cute. Nah, fam, we talking like. The projects on the floor. But it was made up. It was neat. She like laid on the bed on the floor and she was like, hey, just sit down. Come on, sit down or whatever. For one, it's like, you know, I'm, I have bad back. You know, is there anything to help, help me get down this low? Because, I mean, why was your bed on the floor? You're over 40. They even said, listen, 
They even sell the air mattresses that's like up off the ground. Like they like two feet, three feet off the ground. You know what I'm saying? You could have got one of them, but you got like a a queen size mattress that ain't got like them hard steel box springs. I could see them poking out the top. And you talked about my bed. Like she talked. I mean, when I tell you she would talk about my house, like you would think, you know, I just lived in the slums of Baltimore or something like that, man. Let me stop. I love Baltimore. But I, sh- I should have left. I should have left then. I should have left then. But it's like we be staying. And, and listen, character flaws always expose themselves. Integrity exposes itself. Y'all be in these comments. I swear to goodness, every time, like, why, you know, I would never. And I is in you, Tom. You need you pick these crazy women. And you, I'm telling you, y'all, you would not know this stuff unless it happens. And like I've said it before, what y'all think is normal is not normal for everybody. Because everything in her logic of how she was talking to me about my place was absolutely normal. Absolutely normal. Okay. So moving forward. So I left that day. Now I should have just said, you know what? I should have caught her. I should have been like, you know what? We just see things differently. Literally, we see things differently. And so, you know, let's just, you know, end this now. That's what I should have did. But like I said before, you know, we stay in these relationships for whatever reasons, whether it's, you know, we don't want to start over. We you know, tired of trying or, you know, you, you want to give somebody the benefit of the doubt. You want to give somebody grace. You want to, you know, see if, you know, it's some more potential to the whole situation, but no, not this one, not in this one. So what happened was the last straw, right? She was like, I don't really want to, you know, do a crab boil. I do a really good job with those. Um, you should let me, you know, do one now. Me letting her do one is me paying for all the stuff for her to do a crab boil, right? Now, she had a job. She had money. I don't know. I don't know what people do with their funds or whatnot. I had, you know, I went to the store, got the stuff for the crab boil, you know, whatever. Now, I got like a case of crab legs, all this stuff, right? (sighs) Bad. So, she's like, hey, I'm going to do it, you know, on Friday. And so she does the crab boil. I'm coming over there to get, you know, some crabs or whatnot. I'm invited this time. So I get there. I think she told me, like, either she told me that she would be have everything ready by 8 o'clock. And I think I got there around 8.39. When I get there, y'all, why her whole family there? Why her whole family there? I'm talking aunts, uncles, you know, everybody there. Why ain't no crab? Why ain't, why ain't no crab? Why ain't a plate gonna set aside for me? Why? Why, Black Jesus? Look, as soon as I saw her with no plate in there, turned around, walked right back out, got in my car. She started texting me, like, texting me, like, blowing my phone up, calling my phone. Like, you know, where you at? Where you, why you leave? When you coming back? What's wrong? What's wrong? And the thing is, I just felt like I didn't need to explain myself. I just felt like I didn't need to explain myself. This, this relationship had ran its course. And... To this day, this particular girl really feels like she has no idea why I stopped talking to her. Totally oblivious. Be telling people like, yeah, he just ghosted me. Like, just disappeared. I did nothing wrong. He's too picky. I'm too picky. (laughs) But, hey, that's just another one of my crazy, crazy, insane dating stories. I'll see you in the next one.